All right, today I'm sitting behind the wheel of a Chevy Silverado EV RST, which is one of the new General Motors electric vehicles. And you may have heard, you may have heard, unless you were living under a rock, that General Motors did away with Apple CarPlay in its electric vehicles. So some of the old vehicles still have Apple CarPlay. So the Cadillac Lyric, the work truck version of the Silverado EV, they have Apple CarPlay, but all of the new um, electric vehicles coming out from General Motors do not have it. So the Blazer EV, the Equinox EV, the Silverado RST EV, no Apple CarPlay. So what I want to do in this video is I just want to walk you through the alternative. So what this looks like for an iPhone user without Apple CarPlay, because you can still do a lot of stuff. This still has a lot of functionality, um, but it's one of those things that you just you have to figure out and you have to get used to. So my name is Jill Simonello and this week's Car du Jour is a Chevy Silverado RST first edition EV. And uh, yeah, let's just, let's just, let's figure out this Google stuff. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new profile in this vehicle for me. And in order to do that, I have to, um, I'm going to add a profile and uh, I am going to add my phone to this vehicle. And I'm going to sync my Google account, basically, my Gmail. Android is starting. And I had a lot of people um, on social media say, well, is this um, Android Auto? No, but yes. This is an Android operating system. It's a Google operating system. Um, so there is no auto or CarPlay. This essentially is auto built in. It shouldn't take up to three minutes, but it may. So, I mean, here's the thing. Getting your vehicle set up for you takes time. And a lot of times auto reviewers don't take the time to do that because it takes time. But I want to show you this because I don't think anybody else is really going through this. And it is a little bit of a process. So... I'm gonna finish setting up my profile. Customize your car with Google. This is where you are going to add your Google account. So now I have to add in my stuff. So now it um, also has you open um, the, you know, it says, you know, open the YouTube app on iGel for um, second party verification. You know, I get a thing on here that says, are you trying to sign in? Yes, it's me. So now it's going to sign me into the car. So once I'm signed in, I can set all of my preferences from you know, my audio settings to my setting for the seat. And when I am in and I select my profile, it will just automatically remember me. And so once you sign into your Google account, the other thing that you can do is, so included with the car, you've got Waze, you've got Spotify, that will automatically download. And then you have some other um, apps right here. So I did have some questions, is Audible included? Audible is included. Audible is one of the apps that you can download onto the um, screen. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just gonna download all the things. I'm gonna hit install and it's getting my apps ready. <laughs> Again, it's gonna take time. You, you know, the first time you're setting up your vehicle, it takes time. Your setup is complete. You hit done. And now this is my profile. So I can set up my screen, I can do all of the things, and when I log into my profile, it will return to what I want. So one of the really interesting things you can do is you can customize your menu up here. So if you want to put different icons up here from this menu, you just drag and drop, and then it becomes a quick icon for you to be able to use. So it allows you to customize, and if I log out of my profile, 
this changes to whosoever profile you log into. So I think that's kind of cool. It's customized to me. All right, so the other good thing that you've got going on here, so it's still downloading those other apps that we had said we were going to install, but what they have right now are these two. And when I go into Waze, and I'm going to point out, you're gonna see an address point pop up on here that says it's my home address. It's not my home address. I don't give Google that information. Just so you know, you're gonna to go to a bike shop if you go to that address. You're welcome, bike shop. Um, all right, while using the app. And it says, welcome to Waze. And then what it's going to do, it's going to log into my Waze. Um, you do have to do a little, again, first time setup. You, oh, sorry. First time setup, you do have to do the little QR code thing. You're trying to sign into Waze in your car. Yes, it's me. You are signed into Waze. Okay. So start a new drive. This gives you all the great Waze functionality. So um, cops on your route, um, you know, just like the traffic and all of those things. And then um, because this is my Waze, it also um, has my saved places. So yeah, I travel a lot. I have O'Hare International Airport as one of my places. Um, so it's got all of the places in there saved because it's my ways. So I think that's really cool that you can log into your account, your ways there. Now, what you cannot do is um, you cannot do Apple CarPlay things. So you see it's still downloading the apps. We have two new apps there, more apps are coming. Um, there's no Apple CarPlay here. So what you're not gonna get is you're not gonna get your Apple Music, you're not gonna get your iTunes account, you're not gonna get your uh, podcasts. However, we've played around with it a little bit. So I'm putting my phone on the charger here and I wanna give a little bit of an aside here. This charger is one that actually works. I've had my phone in here like all day long and it's charged my phone and it didn't overheat. So thumbs up on that. All right, so now that I have my um, Google operating system set up, sync to my account. The next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is pair my phone. So there are no phones paired. Well, there's phones paired, but none of these are mine. So I'm gonna add a phone. And in order to do that, you do the regular Bluetooth setup where you go into your, you know, okay, yeah, I've got way too many cars in here. Um, but you've got Chevrolet 786 or 7846, 7846. So I'm gonna click on that. It's given me a code. I'm gonna pair. I'm gonna pair, I'm gonna allow. And so now it's pairing my phone. So I've synced my Google account and now I have paired my phone. You can see I am connected. Um, but again, now um, you don't have an easy way on your screen to be able to access your music, your uh, podcast or things like that. So you might think. If you want to access this stuff, you can go into your little music button and it gives you these options here. You're going to go into your Bluetooth and um, it's going to play my music, which I don't want it to do at just this moment. Um, but it gives you the options of, you know, going into your music. There is a way that you can... I'm like, where are my podcasts? There we go. So I, Jill. So now we have my music, my playlist, my radio, and my podcasts. So I can, I mean, this isn't attractive. I'll be honest. I don't like this interface. It doesn't look good. But these are all of the podcasts that I regularly listen to. And so then you can click into the podcast and then it will show you a list of the recent podcasts. Well, here's the thing. I don't know what dates these are. This is kind of a difficult part for me too. So I don't know which one of these is the most recent. Um, so that's slightly problematic. Uh, you know, it's the same. So this is the, the daily. They've taken me back to January. Where are my um, podcasts from May? Okay, May 10th. I know they've had more recent podcasts than that. So that's slightly problematic. You can do it, but it's, it's slightly problematic. The other thing that you can do, and um, you, can, you can say something like, you can ask Siri to do something. So you can say, hey Siri, 
play SOB. Here's SOB by Nathaniel Radcliffe and The Night Sweats. So if you know what song you want to hear, you can ask Siri to play that specific song. If you know what podcast you want to listen to, hey Siri, play podcast TED Talk. Playing podcast TED Talks daily on Apple Podcasts. So then it will, um, in theory, switch over. It did not switch over. But you, you have some options. You can interface with Siri, but it's not going to be as easy or as intuitive or as interactive as Apple CarPlay is. This is a workaround. It's functional. It's functional. One of my uh, journalism friends said, you shouldn't have to make it work. It should just work. And that's kind of that's kind of a really good summary for how I feel about this system. It's not awful. There's a lot of good things here. Being able to connect my Waze account, being able to, you know, go into the Google Play Store and download things. I like all of that stuff. You know, it houses my information, it's my profile, it stores my stuff. But the fact that I can't interface with my iPhone the way I want to means I'm gonna go like this. I would like to listen to a podcast. So while I'm driving, mind you, I'm gonna be driving and I'm gonna be swiping through my phone, going into this, going into my podcast, and then I'm gonna be looking at what the podcasts are available now. Um, and you know, these are the ones that are recent, not the ones that were showing up in you know, the interface. So I, I think that's a little bit of a miss. Um, I think it's something that General Motors and Chevrolet need to work on. There are workarounds but it's a thing. So the other thing that you are not going to be able to do on this is you're not going to be able to access your text messages. So as you can see, I have four text messages and seven voicemail messages right now. You can't um, easily access those either. So if I got a text message while I was um, driving, it would show up through here. So I'm driving, if um, somebody sent me a text message, it would pop up, I could read it, I could reply to it. I can even say, hey Siri, send Tim Esterdahl a text message. What would you like to say to Tim Esterdahl? Hi, period, testing the voice to text in the Silverado. It says, hi, testing the voice to text in a Silverado. Send it. Send it. Done. I can also say something like, hey Google, send a text message to Tim Esterdahl. To do that, you'll need to check your iPhone's Bluetooth settings for this car and make sure show notifications is turned on. If it already is, try disconnecting your phone from the car and then reconnecting it. Okay, so what it's telling me to do is go into here and then you go into the vehicle, go into the information, and it says show notifications. I didn't have that on, so I turned on the show notifications. Now, hey Google, send Tim Esterdahl a text message. To do that, you'll need to check your iPhone's Bluetooth settings for this car and make sure show notifications is turned on. If it already is, try disconnecting your phone from the car and then reconnecting it. I wonder if I do this. So I've disconnected. I'm reconnecting. Again, disclaimer, it takes a while to get things set up if you're doing this for the first time, which thank you for being on this journey with me. My cameraman is yawning. Um, all right, so now let's try. Hey Google, send Tim Esterdahl a text message. Who do you want to text? Tim Esterdahl. Sorry, who do you want to text? Tim Esterdahl. Tim Esterdahl, sure, what's the message? Hi, period, another test message, period, thanks for playing, period. I got, hi, another test message, thanks for playing. Ready to send it? Send it. I got, hi, another test message. We're just gonna hit that button. Sending your message. So you have a couple of options for sending a text message. Now, 
Um, let's see if I can get it to read my text messages. Hey Google, read my text messages. There aren't any new messages. Okay, so we know I have four messages on there. Hey Siri, read my most recent text message. You'll need to unlock your iPhone first. Okay, phone unlocked. Hey Siri, read my text mess. Read my text messages. You have new messages in three conversations. First, Sharice said, "Hey Jill, Rebecca Lindland dropped out of the rally this morning. Kelly well, asked well. me to let you know. Would you like to reply?" No. Next, in the group with you and John, landlord Matt said, "I won't be there for about 30:45, depending on traffic." My toilet's okay, broken. if I go in and take a quick look. Which bathroom? And John said first one. Handle doesn't work at all. This is Reply kind of to uncomfortable. The <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe don't do that with other people in the car or on camera. Um, but uh, so yeah, just in case you were wondering, the first message is my roommate for the Mama Spring Rally just canceled. Um, second message, toilet broken. So um, yeah, there you go. More information than you wanted about me. But okay, so. You can do it through Siri by um, asking Siri a question. You can send text messages through Google and through Siri, and but you have to do it all hands free. There's no you know swiping or accessing anything through a menu. Um, maybe something you would get used to as an owner, but. Personally, I find this a little bit cumbersome. I'm currently at the Midwest Automotive Media Association Spring Rally, and I have the opportunity to sit behind the wheel of the 2024 Chevrolet Blazer EV. And this has the same operating system that was in the Silverado EV. So I'm kind of adding this into the video that I already have because I wanna continue talking about this a little bit more. Previously, I'd focused on talking about the things that you can't do without Apple CarPlay, and I figured I should give a little bit of space of, to some of the things that you can do without Apple CarPlay. So I've paired my phone, I have created a profile here. So I've created a profile, which means I've logged into my Google account. I have um, paired my phone, um, which by the way, my mother <laughs> just called me. And so it's depositing a text message into my account. I don't know what she said, so I'm not gonna go through this again and have um, her read um, some kind of personal message. But, um, so the text message showed up and you can see if I wanted to play it, I can hit the play button. So while I'm in the car, if somebody text messages me, there is the ability to go in and to play or reply to text messages. Now, the other thing that I've done is I have downloaded some apps and so I had talked previously about the idea of how unattractive the screen looked when you were using the Siri commands with your phone and trying to access things through your Bluetooth connection. Well, I went ahead and I downloaded the Google Podcast app and I created a Spotify account. So to use this vehicle and to listen to your music without Apple Music and to make it look pretty, that this is one of the things that you have to do. So I go into my podcasts, I can go into my subscriptions and I went ahead and added a couple of things in here. Um, this is not all the podcasts I listen to, but it has some of the subscriptions. You can go in, it shows you the date, it shows you, um, you know, the, the title, it gives you um, the accurate picture of the um, podcasts that are here. Okay, so that's easy and it's attractive and it's pretty. Um, and I could do something like, hey Google, play podcast Today Explained. Okay, here's Today Explained on Spotify. Doesn't like the podcast app apparently. Um, but I, I mean, there's a learning curve. I've, I've been behind the wheel for like playing with this system for four hours you're not going to get a four hour video, but I've been playing with this system for four hours. So I'm still learning, um, about what this system does, how the voice commands work, but there is a way to do the voice commands. This does show up. It's playing through Spotify rather than the podcast app, um, which wasn't my intention, but Hey, I'm listening to the podcast I want to listen to. 
So um, the other thing you can do, like I've, I've already showed you, I've logged into my Waze account. You know, like I said, I created the Spotify account. You can go into the podcasts and I can do this fairly easily by just, you know, touching and swiping through the different menus. So here's another text message. This is about most Muslim. likely rain checking tonight. Let you know if that changes. Apologies. Do you want to reply? No. Okay. So the text message came in. I was able to um, play the text message and then I was able to reply to the text message if I wanted to. That is very much like the Apple CarPlay system. It's just through the Google operating system. Now I will say the one place that I did run into problems with this system was when I was trying to use Google to send a text message to my husband, it kept misspelling his name. And for whatever reason, Google couldn't find him. However, if I went into Siri, so if I said H-E-Y-S-I-R-I, -I, which I'm not gonna do because she listens, um, and then said, send a text message to my husband, then it would send the text message to my husband. So you're gonna have to find multiple ways to interface with the system is the end of that story. But at the end of the day, there is still no Apple CarPlay. I would love to know what you think. How do you feel about not having Apple CarPlay on a vehicle? Is that a deal breaker for you? Um, could you get by? Maybe you're one of those Android people who are like, yeah, I don't care. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. Maybe you're one of those people. Um, so I, I don't know. I, is this a big deal? I've, I've had a lot of people tell me it is. I've had some people tell me it's not. Comment below. And um, yeah, so that is just a very, really long rambling look at how this system operates. Um, thank you for um, sticking with me through it. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you learned something. And um, let me know, is this a deal breaker? All right, that's what I have for you on the not Apple CarPlay system in the Chevrolet Silverado RST EV first edition mouthful. Um, I'll see you next time with a new car du jour.